the next question assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh dr zakir naik i am aisha shireen a medical student from india i would like to hear your reply on people saying that exposing the body and the way a woman dresses is not the reason for all the sexual harassment and rape since even a 2 year old child is being raped by men in today's world you can't blame the dressing of women this i think is actually contradicting with the quran since allah has commanded us to cover ourselves from getting molested how do you reply to such statements regarding the modesty in dressing bab that's the overcoat you know going completely covering a loose overcoat and it gives the reason so that you shall be recognized that you are a modest woman and it will prevent you from being molested so this statement that the dressing of the woman is not the cause only for being molested or being raped i do agree it is not the only cause and it's not always the cause but it is one of the major causes of molestation and rape before i come to the last answer or the reasoning that why a 2 year old girl is also raped we'll analyze the statement that is modesty or the dressing of women involved or is responsible for molestation or rape i do agree that dressing is not the only reason but it is one of the major reason and when a survey was conducted in uk by a very leading newspaper on the women who were raped 26% of the victims who were raped they said that the major reason that they were raped was because that they were immodestly dressed so imagine the victim herself they are agreeing that one of the major reason is because they were immodestly dressed so i do agree it is one of the major reason but it's not the only reason it's not the only cause besides dressing there are other causes also and if someone disagrees with this then i feel he may not be aware and in today's world but natural just because a woman is immodestly dressed that doesn't give the permission for a man to rape her or molest her even is responsible both are equal responsible allah says in the quran in surah nur chapter number 24 verse number 30 and 31 verse number 30 first speaks about the hijab for the man and then for the woman allah says in the quran in surah nur chapter 34 verse number 30 say to the believing man that he should lower his gaze and guard his modesty and then the next verse says in surah nur chapter 24 verse number 31 say to the believing woman that she should lower her gaze and guard her modesty and display not her beauty except what appears ordinary of and draw a head covering over her bosom over her chest except in front of her husband her father her son and a list of mahram is given based on this but natural the guidance is given in the quran first is for the man that he should lower his gaze irrespective whether he may be a pious man or not it's compulsory that whenever a woman whenever a man looks at a woman and if any brazen thought comes he should lower his gaze and imagine if a woman is immodestly dressed and if a man looks at her and if nothing happens to him then he requires a psychiatrist however pious he is how am i islamic is he may be the biggest sheikh in the world he may be the biggest dai even for the sahaba the rule was the same that they could not stare at a woman and when they looked at a woman of course they should lower the gaze so this rule is for everyone if a person says he looks at a woman who is immodestly dressed and nothing happens to him he requires a psychiatrist he is abnormal he is not a normal human being so number one is that the woman should not be immodestly dressed even if she is immodestly dressed a man should not stare at a woman his duty is to lower the gaze if both of them break the rules of islam then you have these sins like molestation rape etc and as i mentioned that dressing is not the only reason for molestation and today survey tells us that in most of the cases of rape the victim is known to the rapist majority of the cases why because besides the dressing even the way they behave the way a lady speaks the way she walks the way she talks the way she carries along herself all this 
comes under the complete purview of hijab. And what happens normally, most of the rapists, they know the victim, maybe the classmate, maybe a colleague in the office, maybe acquaintance, maybe a neighbor. And because they chit chat and they know each other and they take it for granted, they go out together. And maybe at the last moment, the woman may not want to have, uh, have the relationship any forces and that's called as rape. Or imagine if a woman is not dressed properly and if a man stares at her, he will look for an opportunity, he will follow her to see to it that when she, he finds her in a secluded area, he will rape her. So the cause is both the woman who is immodestly dressed and even the man, both are responsible. So one of the major causes is the women who are immodestly dressed. This, this question I've always asked, that if there are two twin sisters, both of them are equally beautiful, and if they're walking down the streets of New York or any city, and around the corner, there is a hooligan who's waiting for a catch. And one of the twin sisters, she's wearing the Western clothes that's completely modest, a low neck and shorts, mini skirts. And the other twin sister, she's wearing the hijab, her complete body covered, except her face and the hand of the protagonist are seen. And if both of them are walking down the street and around the corner, there's a hooligan who's waiting for a catch, which girl will tease? And but natural the answer is the girl wearing the western clothes, the girl wearing the mini skirts or a deep low neck. So but natural the dressing of the lady, if she dressed up immodestly, the chances that she'll be molested is multiple times more than she's modestly dressed. Yes, there can be an occasion where a woman may be completely covered, wearing hijab, wearing naqab, and yet may be molested or raped, but the chances is negligible. And regarding, besides the clothing, where a person behaves, the way a person talks, there are various hadith regarding hijab. That the Prophet said that a nahmer, a man and woman alone cannot be in a room. If they are alone, then the third person is the devil. It is a shaitan. And you find it very common in the western countries that in workplaces or in other places, you find that men and women or nahmeram, they are, they are alone in closed doors. You even have cases, in most of the cases, you have the lady who is the secretary, a personal secretary of the boss. And unfortunately, I'm shocked, even in, in the Western countries, majority of the dais or the Islamic speakers, they have ladies as secretaries. I'm shocked. Aren't there any Muslim men available in the Western countries to be your secretary? And this is a fitna, that if you have a secretary of the opposite sex through the Naam Arab, and if you're alone with her in the closed doors, and if you're dictating, if you're giving a, you're dictating a letter or a reply, and imagine she's alone, there has to be a fitna. The third person is the devil. And if you have a secretary, and if you don't give dictation, etc., then what's the use of the secretary? So if you see this, situation, if you follow Islam as a whole, the dressing, the way they behave, the way they talk, whether you should not be alone with a naam Arab, if you follow all these principles of hijab, then inshallah, the chances of being molested or raped is negligible. But there can be cases where you may have a sick person. And you give the example that there are cases where a girl who is only two years old, she's being raped. <clears throat> but these cases, as compared to normal cases, is a very small negligible percentage. Today, according to statistics, if a lady goes to a university in USA, the statistics say that more than 97% of the women, some studies say more than 99% of the women, before they pass the university, they lose their virginity. So, this is the situation. So, the normal that you find the zina and the molestation and the rape is so common in the western world and now it has percolated even to the eastern world. These cases that men raping girls of two years old are rare cases, which is haram, which is a very big sin. This happens because they are so much used to the normal sex and having it open with other, they want something different and psychologically a person goes for abnormal things. 
So these cases are negligible and for such people, of course, it is haram. But if you dress up modestly, you will be safe from the majority of the molestation. That does not mean that if a psychic person, patient rapes a two-year-old girl, that's the reason the woman should not be dressed up modestly. So if you dress up modestly, you will be saved from the millions of normal people. You may only have to take care of that small percentage of psychic people or the abnormal people. But a normal man, however pious he is, if you dress up immodestly and if he happen to look at you, there has to be some change. If he says nothing happens to him, he requires a psychiatrist. So but natural, the rulings of the Quran and the Hadith regarding the criteria of hijab is Alhamdulillah very scientific, is very logically and you should adhere to it. So this statement that dressing of a woman is not the only cause I agree. But it is one of the major cause and if you analyze all the rulings of the hijab regarding the modesty in Islam, Inshallah, Inshallah, this will prevent almost all the cases of molestation and rape. Hope that answers the question.